Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Vines Unknown webinar series. And in this segment, we're exploring Crete. I'm your host, Fotis Tamos, and along with me, my co-hosts, Ari Kalos and Catherine Copeland. Hey, everyone. Hi, everyone. And Hi. we want to introduce our special guest with us, one of our repeat guests, Johnny Livanos of Diamond Wine Importers, along with uh, one of our special friends and new to our program, Kamal Kuri from Molivos Restaurant, wine director, general manager, but above all, um, well, I like to say one of the most important uh, advocates in the Greek wine industry, also noted for being the Greek wine ambassador to the U.S. Kamal, welcome to the program. No, thank you for having me. Pleasure having well, you. With you. Thanks for taking the time. I'm sure being in New York City, lots going on, very busy gentlemen. Uh, we definitely thank you for the time that you're putting together for us. And uh, in this segment, folks, uh, it's all about um, getting to know a little bit more about Crete. But more importantly, before we kick off, we'd love to get to know a little bit more about Kamal, because I think he uh, has a lot to offer. He has an interesting story. And I think he's one of the pioneers that helped place Greek wines on the uh, international map here, at least in the US. Kamal, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started into the wine business. Sure. Well, I started about um, targeting Greek wines about 25 years ago when uh, production was, uh, you know, was average and yep. export was low. Um, so I felt that that sector was very important. The fact that I traveled in Santorini, tasted some wine sure. then. I didn't even know what the great varieties, you know, it was a nice hot summer in Santorini. Grabbed a glass of wine sipped on it, was blown away with it on the spot. And I tried to understand what this, uh, what this wine grape, how it's made. You know, it was a simple wine, but still was uh, some character. Uh, just to remind me of the, the whole days I spent on, on Santorini. Coming back to the States, I say, let me see what I can find this wine. Yeah. Look for books. And it was nothing. It was just uh, um, books, Greek, uh, actually, uh, wine books that have 500 pages and they have one paragraph about Greek wine. So just a little bit felt, you know, that's not fair. And I started, you know, asking questions and understanding and developing. And I was lucky enough to start with the Levanos Restaurant Group 20 years ago. I took over the program within, within one year and um, start understanding, developing. And that my, my goal became to go ahead and travel. And that's the only way to find out about the people and the terroir and the, the, the wines. Uh, never a book can tell you the whole story. So me, me going sometimes two to three times a year to Greece, wow. meeting people and uh, understanding uh, their, uh, their, 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 their thinking, understanding the, the, the climate, understanding the terroir. And that gives me an idea. And, uh, and that's made me, you know, go so, in deep into the wines. You know? So basically, it was, I can say, love at first sip. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. very first yeah, sip no, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it was. changed everything for you. Yes, and coming back and the fact that it was not, no, 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 I would say no restaurant, even Greek or not Greek, was caring about the, the wine that, that pushed me to, to see what, why, why was, was and, a curiosity as well. And your curiosity so, also, I, I think, also led to being very adventurous and very, um, could we say, risk, risk taking yes. as far as you put together uh, one of the first and only all Greek wine programs at the restaurant level in the U.S. I think yes. the first. Uh, the yeah. first. The first. So, so when I when I started working at Molivos, you know, um, and with the Mediterranean wine list, with little bits of Californian wines, I understood year by traveling up year after year. There is I saw there's a little bit of stability in the winemaking of Greece. Meaning, if I took a glass of Moscow Filero, the same winery and tasted three years in a row, I felt there is stability. And that's what drove me to decide in 2007, you know what, I think the Greek wine sector overall are starting to be serious, you know, not, the, the, the terroir is always there. The raw materials are always there. It's more likely I feel in the, in the lab, in the, in the winery, in the selection of the oak, in the, in the, in, and also in the vineyard, you know what I mean? Understanding right. that. 
So by, by 2007, after there is the stability, with the blessing with the Livanos family, they say, I asked them, you know what, I'm thinking to go 100%, but also was a trust between the, the Livanos family and myself, and we're able to achieve that. And the wine list grew from 300 labels now, then, then, so we have almost like 900 labels. Wow. In, wow. In, in, that's amazing. In, in Molibos, yes. And that's wow. give us, also give us also, uh, like give me and Molibos a library. You know, I take a wine yep. that's been made in 2000, for example, and I can say some wine that is made in 2016. For example, wine, wine is a Ramlista, Xino Mavro. I will understand the evolution of the vineyard because it's the same vineyard, evolution of the winemaking evolution of the grape so that gives me some kind of history and background to to double check you know almost like a like a like i have a bank of information and that shows me what they were doing then and what they're doing now you know what i mean so that's mm -hmm. uh, so you must have a an amazing collection of aged wines as well yes definitely we have uh, we have some wineries from the first wine for example kiriani was established in uh, 91, its first vintage was 94. Basically, it was a, a vintage made a few bottles, and then it was basically handwritten a uh, piece of paper on, on as a label, and we have a wow. few bottles of that. So we had his first vintage, which is 1994, and we have his last vintage so far I have in the, in the cellar, 2016. So we have some wines that we can showcase 30 years of winemaking of same same vineyard, same vineyard, same grape. So I mean, if anyone's actually the, yeah. seen the evolution of Greek wines, it's got to be you. I mean, hands there down. Is, yeah, meaning, you know, there is a lot of other people doing a lot of stuff, but um, I went early, meaning I, I took a chance, like you said, early on and understood what they're doing. And I saw that they're doing good. If I felt that they were not showing or the country is not interesting or the grape are not, then I maybe I'll back up. But the fact that I see a lot, of, I saw a lot of energy in, in the Greek uh, viniculture part. I saw uh, amazing um, uh, work with the new winemaker generation. Their father were growers. Now they're winemakers. The kids are winemakers. I saw diversity, meaning the 80s were only mostly French trained, Bordeaux, Dijon. Now from all over, you know, you see uh, Fresno, California, you see David. Uh, Tuscany, you see some people did training in Germany. So now you have a same grape, same terroir, but three techniques, three schools. And that gives also a different uh, variation to the wine. So that's also helped as well. Excellent, excellent. Um, so Molibos happens to be one of my favorite restaurants. I mean, I got to say, not just as a Greek restaurant, but I got to say as a restaurant in the country. Um, well, we were talking I'm about Molibos before. I want people don't know, just a real brief uh, history of Molibos because it's, I think that's important. Yeah, so for those of you who haven't been or haven't heard of Molibos, uh, we opened, I guess, 25, 26 years ago, come on. Uh, 1997. Yeah, 1997. I don't know how to do math. Um, <laughs> And we are, we were one of the first um, restaurants in the country that was doing a high end Greek cuisine. Um, you know, taking family recipes, classic recipes from all over the different regions of Greece. And I think that's important is the regional Greek cuisine. A lot of times people think of Greece, they think of Greek food as one giant, like ball, um, one giant, you know, that's it. It's just Greek food is all one thing. But this, from region to region, there's lots of different styles and cuisines. And Molibos was one of the first restaurants to kind of really focus on that. Um, our opening chef was Chef Jim Boutsakos. And, you know, he did a really good job of, of setting that tone. Uh, we got three stars in New York Times. And then with Kamal's leadership as well to, to transport, to bring the wine component into it, to tell the full story of Greece was, was tremendous. And, you know, we've been consistently serving high quality Greek food there uh, for, yeah, 20 something years. And um, we're excited to keep on going. We're on in Midtown right. Manhattan, uh, right next to Carnegie Hall and 7th Avenue uh, between 55th and 56th Street. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So, I'm curious too, by the way, um, is was that hard being one of the first ones to pioneer a venture like that? I mean, certainly if you're the first one to pioneer anything, it can be tricky, but I mean, taking on yeah. like originality so, and- Yes, yeah. oh, it's always difficult when you do something different against the grain. Um, 
mm-hmm. but I want to ex- I want to experience not something new. You go to a bistro, you find food, you find a casserole, you find escarole, and you find a uh, French wine. You go to a trattoria, you have antipasto, and and you have this Italian wine. So we're not doing something something different. We're just doing it. Greek. We're just sure. doing Greek, yeah. and we are proud of doing Greek. That's the only thing, and we emphasize on it, and we say yes, we are. We can able to give you a good plate of food that's all the world already recognized years and years. So we want to add you a glass of wine. I want, you know what I mean? We're going to do mm-hmm. a liquor maybe. And that's the experience. We want to create that experience. Like we want you to travel wherever you are, in New York, Boston, whatever, to Greece in that, in that setting. Yes, you have those doubters and, you, and also you have those people that are stuck in their head with one wine. You know, I want, I don't want to name a grape or region, but I want that region and I want that wine. And if that's what you need to able to be patient with them mm-hmm. and, and cater to them to make them trust you and trust Greek wine eventually, and then eventually you move them. A simple thing what I was doing early, if somebody I want to see, I want a Chablis, you know what I mean? Uh, I want something or I want whatever wine it is. Unfortunately, we don't have it, but we have something similar. Before I was in, in introducing them to amazing Chardonnays produced in Greece, but people tell me why Chardonnay. But Chardonnay was my gate to other indigenous. So if you taste a Chardonnay point. and you have an understanding of Chardonnay, how it's made, and I give you a beautiful crisp Chardonnay with some minerality and mm-hmm. typicity to the, to, to the place, a sense of wine, sense of place, then you're going to say, okay, I can give you now an Assyrtiko and I can, you can trust me. You know that the product is there. The savoir is there. We can handle Chardonnay. Can you imagine if we could handle Chardonnay? We cannot handle our own heritage grapes. So that's I was a that was a way Good of strategy. opening up the gates. You know, yeah, so yeah. that's so that was always the, the case. Yes, awesome. Thank because you. it's all ever in the end is trust uh, in you know oh. it's just and to be daring to able to try something different. You know what I mean? So right, that's, that's what, what it's, it's all about. Yeah. yeah. So yes. Yeah. Speaking of being different, uh, I think that would kind of kind of be the segue for us to kind of get into our topic of this webinar. Uh, in our previous webinar of Vines Unknown, we explored the island of Santorini, which is a more familiar location where most folks who have heard of it have traveled there. Uh, but often enough, we've heard of Crete, but it's never considered, uh, in my opinion, from the masses as a, you know, as a respectable wine producing region. And I think that it deserves uh, more credit and more time. So we wanted to devote this segment uh, to the wine culture of Crete. Mm. Having said that, I'd like you know Johnny and Kamal to kind of take on uh, the discussion from this point about uh, allowing our audience and our guests to get to know a little bit more about Crete. Yeah, let me start a little bit off. Just my, my first time in Crete was only a few years ago. I went there four years ago on a wine tour, and I was blown away not just by the wine, but by the beauty of the country, the beauty of the the people, the the landscape. The cuisine, the food, the music, the what everything about Crete was like. I wish my family was born here so that I could go to Crete more often. Not that, not that my where my family's from Lesbos. It's a beautiful place. I love going there. But Crete, you know, there's, there's not that many places where you could go into the mount, have a mountain view at snow-capped mountains, and look at the beach. The same exact time. Johnny, Johnny, don't be jealous, but I am half Cretan. I'm, I'm <laughs> jealous. Yeah. Um, and Make sure you. We, all right, if you want to share, I want to show a quick photos just to kind of paint this picture. Just, you sure. know, my trip, I was surrounded by amazing, unique foods that were not in other parts of Greece. Cheeses that are so fresh. And I don't know what the, what the sheep eat over there, but they were so delicious. Like honey made from wildflowers. It, it just, something, Crete is just so alive. And it's also a huge island, right? So Crete is the biggest island in Greece. It's the southernmost island in Greece. And um, so you have this really unique weather. What, what's that? I'm pulling up all the images for you. Okay, cool. Yeah, I just wanted to share so share some pictures of the people who haven't been. Yeah, so this is Crete. Uh, it is the, again, the biggest island in Greece. So what is cool about that is that you have these some very large cities in the island, whereas a lot of times when you're going to the little islands in Greece, you know, you're in the little village, you're in the Horyo, you're just, you're, you're, you're kind of taken away from the rest of civilization. But what's cool about Crete is you have the ability to go to Heraklion, which is a very, it's one of the largest cities in Greece. And then also, you know, 30 minute drive, go to the coasts 
where you're just in a very unique, desolate, all alone and just be able to explore. Um, so the wines we're going to be tasting today are kind of in all, where those little pink dots are in the, in the center of that map. Um, yeah, that's the little pink dots in the center of the map. That's where all like the main wine regions in Greece are, uh, in Crete are. Uh, so we're, we're at, we're, the wines we're tasting today are in the center. Um, and then if you want to scroll down, I wanted to show you a picture of me eating the lamb just so you get a picture of how good the food is. <laughs> yeah. This is my yeah, favorite. Okay. <laughs> wow. The Korean barbecue. Yeah. Well, I'm drinking yeah. uh, uh, yeah, or like the, Cre yeah. the Cretan um, Raki. Which oh, is, um, Johnny, Johnny, by the way, uh, my mom is the one that's from Crete, and her last name is Tsikudakis. Oh, wow. Tsikudakis. That's wow, that's, that's original. <laughs> that's me drinking Tsikud, yeah. <laughs> She claims her family invented sequel. Yeah, I don't know if that's true, though. <laughs> that's amazing. Every family, every family yeah. that. Yeah, so Crete's a really cool place. Um, and what's awesome about Crete is, uh, you know, Greece in general is special because there are hundreds, if not maybe even thousands of in grapes that only grow in Greece. But then you go to Crete, and you're basically in another country in itself. There's now, you know, I think if Greece has like 600 or what's that? Uh, come on, how many grapes, you know? The Greece has? Classi classified grape 320. So 320 classified grapes, thank you, in Greece. And then Crete alone has, I think, dozens that are only from Crete. Um, so, you know, it's, it's very special about Crete. You're drinking, today we have, in the white wine we're talking about is Vidiano, which is a indigenous Cretan variety. You don't really see it anywhere else in Greece. And then Kotsifali is the red variety we'll be trying today. Again, only really from Crete. So yeah. what's cool about Crete is you have not only food, music, a dialect, um, the style of clothing, too, that they wear in Crete. And dancing. And dancing, yes. But then you have also varieties of grapes that are only from that island, which just make it a special place. And definitely, you know, if you're going to go to Greece, I recommend taking a visit to Crete. Yeah, definitely. It's so special. Well, yeah, also be beside Crete, you know, we'll do a little... You don't have to share my picture anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Crete, the unique thing about Crete, first of all, is one of the oldest winemaker region, you know, dating back to the Minoan civilization. That's yes. the first thing, because you see that as a simple tourist that you're going to travel to the island and you see it all over the place, ancient uh, wine presses. So the, 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 the idea of winemaking was planted thousands of years ago. Uh, winemaking never stopped in Greece, uh, in uh, Crete, especially in Crete, because two things. Um, even though the Ottoman Empire was um, holding more the port cities out, out of the mountains, you know, the production still continue. Also, southern part of the island was um, protected by the Venetians, so the, the, the wines continued to produce. Uh, that's very unique. Um, then we, we forward back forward in the 70s was the first appellation that was um, the 70s was the phylloxera era when the island really saw devastation um, of of of, uh, of that disease and then that they start to be organized. 71 was the first time that appellation system was established. There were only five appellation then and still in plus two. Um, Greece, first of all, like Johnny said, is the largest uh, island of Greece and the most important one. Run, just give you some numbers, run 160 miles long and about 25 miles uh, width. And anchored by three mountains, Lefka Oros, we have uh, Silo Ritis uh, mountain and uh, to the east, Dikti uh, mountain. So really, this mountain creates a, like almost a land barrier to the Aegean Sea. So they even Crete helped what's happening in the Aegean through those mountains. If there were not those mountains, all this island will be super dry. So you have those mountains that's also a land barrier from the Libyan Sea, which is, you know, as you know, there's a lot of Saharian uh, wind that comes in the summer and super, super hot. So basically the, the, island, the whole island is a continuous valleys and nooks and flat land is very rare, you know? The unique thing about, uh, Crete, because it's a long island and different era, is a different uh, soil composition. And soil composition, believe me, play a big role in this grape, indigenous grape. You have calcus with high por uh, proportion of clay, that's uh, maybe 70% of the island. And there is a plot of limestone, sandy uh, clay, uh, loam rich in calcium. 
and some other um, uh, volcanic matters. That's very important. Climates, which is very unique, uh, believe it or not, is the southern part of, of Greece and still two degrees cooler than Santorini because of that elevation, you get that cool air from the mountains, you know? The fact that you have those mountains, the, ra the rainfall, it's, um, it is a lot of abundance of water. So there is no, it's like, it's your typical Mediterranean, mild and rainy winters and uh, hot and sunny summers. So the rainfall, the book comes from March, October to March, which is what the winemakers want because nobody wants rain in the summer. So you have that ability. And the, the water ability is good for Mediterranean standards. So the combination of climate, topography, water ability, soil makes Crete an excellent region for viticulture. So those are the first thing. In the 80s, when they came back, they were just focusing on international grapes, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Sangiovese, some, and, and the Rhone Valley grapes, which they did very well, but they were only for consum local consumption. They were never uh, for export matters. Uh, and also for, for critic to talk about Greek wine. But the last, I would say for me, for Crete, Greece maybe the last 15 years. For Crete, the last seven years, that really the focus is about 30 wineries. Uh, most of them are, 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 were, were, were established post-2000. Few of them, like Alisakis, is from basically the 70s as a winery, but 1930 as a, as a, as a family-run uh, business. And these wineries start to focus on the indigenous grapes. So the whites, we have Villana grape, which is the king or the queen of, of, of the whites. You have Vidiano, which is the most, I will say, the, the newcomer, the diva of the grapes that really will be the, the, will be the flagship of Crete. You will think Crete, you will think Vidiano. You will, like Santorini, you think Assertico. Vidiano is the key for that, for that uh, grapes because it does different give you different wine characters for different terroir and elevation and also and age think, very well. Uh, I think the wine that from Dulofakis too is kind of like one of those pioneers of that variety and, and yeah, gives you a great example of what that grape potential that yeah. grape is. So also there is Daphne, there is Trapsatiri, Malvasia di Canvi, Muscat Spina, Clito, those are white. And then there is uh, Cozzifali, Liatico, Mandilaria or Mandilari in Greece, in Crete. And of course, uh, uh, Romaico, which is an ancient grape, basically, that grows there. So that gives you, so you have different terroir, different topography, different grape variety, and now you add on the savoir faire. Every winemaker is different, you know, different style, different school. So you have a melange of all these flavors, like you cook, cook in nice pots of food, you know, and then it gives you this almost like this spice rack you pick whatever you want and you create this this beautiful wines like the wines of greece yeah the wines of greece are uh, high in acid why in high in acid because they always drink with food you go to greece you order a glass of wine they will give you something to eat you order food you're gonna order wine that's how it is it's a combination you never find somebody with the glass of wine even though there is plenty of wines from greece that you can enjoy as an aperitif uh, by itself but usually comes with food. That's what acidity play a big role. Um, and to retain acidity with that amount of heat in Greece, that's amazing. That means it shows you a lot of work in the vineyard. A uh, lot of uh, low yield that's become very essential right now to able to showcase the true character of grape variety. Um, the last few years is less oak use. That means not to mask the flavors of this beautiful, uh, indigenous grape varieties. So you see a lot of techniques. You, you see also a little bit of uh, amphora using going back to the roots and in, introducing uh, amphora using indigenous yeasts. A table, you know, most of the grapes, we're not even talking about them because not, for Greece it's not important. Every Greek, every grape, I would say 90% of the production of Greece is organic. So for Greek, and for us, organic is something that we don't even talk about it anymore because it's, it's, it's natural. Given. It's a given. Yes, exactly. It's, it's got, it's exactly. And, and now it's more like less, um, let the grape speak itself. Let the grape show its case, show its character, show its nuance, and work hard in the vineyard. And that's why Greek Work, the viniculture or wine grower work very hard in the way because most of these are on the on elevation in Crete 250 to 700 meters elevation 
uh, terraces. You cannot use a tractor to use it. It's basically hand, hand, hand tools, handcrafted stuff. The harvest is definitely hand, hand, handmade. And then, like I said, in the last seven years, it's technology. Now you have good quality equipment that you Greece never had a chance to, to, to have back 20 years ago. And now it's, it's about showing case the wine and, and trusting your philosophy. And that's what I like about Greek winery right now. Every winery has a philosophy, an objective. Uh, they don't wait, they say, they don't make a formula for the wine before the harvest starts. They wait until the grape comes in and decide to make the wine accordingly to that wine. You know, yes, you work hard to achieve what you want in the vineyard, but the result dictates what approach you're going to deal with the wines. You know what I mean? If, yeah. you know, how the wines are and how the harvest is. So those are the um, important things about Crete, uh, about, uh, about Crete as a... And the, the most important thing for me, it's deliver much more quality than the price. It's, it's not one thing for sure. Value, it's like hashtag everyday wine. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's always like there. Yeah, so it's, it's... And it's approachable. So you can find a bottle of wine that maybe costs $20 retails and you may get, you know, double in value what you're drinking, you know? So that's, that's a good thing. Awesome. Yeah. Well said, well said. I think one yeah. important note, you know, that Kamal mentioned is that like every, all the winemakers are making wine with a purpose. And, you know, I think it's, it's a nice, it's a nice transition from the olden days of Greek winemaking, where I think the winemakers are more focused on making a lot of wine or bulk wine. You know, and now the, the, the message or the philosophy, the, the purpose has changed where instead of just making, um, you know, as much wine as you can to sell as much wine as you can, it's about how can I make the best wine possible that represents my, my variety, my place, my vineyard, my land, my country to showcase, to tell my story. And I think the, wine, the wines we chose today and, and a lot of the winemakers throughout Crete, they do a really good job at, at doing that. Um, should we transition to the first wine? Yeah, let's, let's, let's get into the wine. I mean, I've been okay. sipping, but I definitely should say let's get into it. Yeah. So the first wine, we have the white, um, the Vidiano. Um, so like Kamal mentioned, this is going to be, you know, we believe that this is going to be the white variety of Crete. Um, so this comes from Dulufaki's uh, uh, vineyard. Um, Ari, so I don't know if you want to show the photos. I got a couple photos of the winemakers, and you can kind of scroll through them while I talk about the wine. Sure, let me... Uh, let me share so like Kamal my... said, this is going to be the diva of the wine. Yes, for sure. Yeah, the, the grape, for sure. And Dulufakis, uh, Nico Dulufakis, you know, I met him, like, uh, before he worked with Ted Diamantes, and he was just coming in and bringing his wine. I went to Inorama, which is the festival of, of wine in Athens. Then it was done every two years. Now it's every year. And only year I missed it is this year because of... Uh, the corona virus that's the only way i missed it and uh he it's the then like 15 years ago when i was speaking to him you see the guy has an objective have a have something in mind like a plan he's not going blind that's for sure yeah. and vidiano like i don't know if that picture vidiano and when it's oval like that's a clone the oval if the grape is oval that's the best grape this is gives you um gives you the finesse of Vidiano because there's few clones out there. Ah. Um, so that's, that's it from, from, from if it has that overly yeah. shape, but that's the best grape. Yeah. They, they are by, you eat them by themselves in harvest, they're, they're, they, are, they are yummy besides even making wine, you know? <laughs> so, um, Interesting. yeah, they are really, it's very, very, you crush it in your hand and it's fragrant, like almost a bouquet of flowers in your hand. And this is just a fresh, you know, not with, Yeast doesn't even because yeast add most of the aromatic with the contact, but here it just itself is still fresh in your hand. Yeah, it's and cool. very crisp. It has, yeah, it has a lot of tropical fruit notes. It's creamy. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's no there's no oak aging on this wine, but it has some body to it. Um, yeah, and then one thing it's important to note is how much you know th this particular winemaker, Nikos Dulufakis. If you scroll down, Aris, you can see you have a picture of him, and then a picture of like, some of his vineyard. He does, he does, all of his grapes are certified organic. So he's doing some really important work in the, in the vineyards. And, you know, organic wine is, is unique in Greece uh, because, you know, I feel like they've been making more wine organically for forever. Like that's forever. Just, they make wine. They, they always make wine organically before or, the word organic was trendy. 
Um, cause that's just how they put so much care into making wines. You know, they don't want to poison it with, with fertilizers. So, you know, but when you're making an organic wine, you just have to be that much better of a winemaker because if you have a problem, you can't just spray it away. You have to do natural things to get in the land to, to really understand what is happening um, to, to either fix an issue or to make those grapes taste as best as they can. Um, so it's really, it's awesome that he's, be, he's been able to achieve that. Um, That's a great down, point. If you scroll down, we'll yeah, have one more picture, I think. Um, maybe I don't. One more time. Yeah, so here's a cool picture of, so you can see in between the um, in, in between the rows of vines, instead of throwing a lot of fertilizer, they have what's called cover crop. So basically after, after these, these cover crops, basically wild herbs and things are grow, they'll, they'll turn them into the soil to get that natural nitrogen and, 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 uh, and nutrition food. back and into food, the yeah. soil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, let's add on to the video, I know, beside the one you tasted, just a, a, a definition, not definition, but a little more information. Vidiano, when it's young, is very vibrant. You know, it's very, you know, see the tropical fruits, usually uh, stone fruit uh, aromas on the palate. Be in the beginning, it's more citrusy. Uh, again, those unripe stone fruits. Uh, but I love about it is the, uh, the, uh, the acidity, it has a nice acidity that's with, as he ages, uh, for me, Vidiano is to drink it three years. You know what I mean? You, don't need to, you can enjoy it early, but as he ages, it's developed to this it's creamy developed. texture. And yeah, uh, and, and, uh, and the finish, you know what I mean? And also has that, this savory element of the wine after it become more like, here it is more like peachy, a little bit of nectarine, creamy. You get a little bit of uh, sage elements, you know work very well with salty cheeses, spicy, spicy cuisines, you know, with a piece of lamb on the charcoal, you know, works very well, you know. And what I go back to the Daphneos by, by uh, Dulufakis, it's, it's on point, you know what I mean? It's, sometimes you, you feel, especially the, I know, what are you tasting, 2018, I believe, you tasting, guys? Yeah. Uh, yes, we are. 2018, doing... yeah? 2018, yeah? 2018, I think, it picked, meaning the things came together. Because don't forget, this grape is not been, nobody will tell you it's like 20 years, 30 years of vines. This is our new vines, so they're young. Oh, so yeah. the vine, as they age, as they take some time, the fruit will even become more powerful. That's why I say it is the diva of the grape. It is the future. It's only we saw young. I saw, uh, drank a Vidiano from three years old vineyard. It was stunning. Can you imagine what it does at 10 oh. years? Winemakers tell me 12 years is a jackpot for them. So this wine... The We've got to keep our, our eyes on the future production of uh, Vidiano. Vidiano, definitely. And for the price you pay, it's, it's, it's amazing. You, like I said, you can... I'm sure, Catherine, you're trying it. I'm sure you've been... For this, cheeses will do very well with this. For me, give me a plot of cheeses and some maybe pickled stuff because of the creaminess of the wine. Mm -hmm. And I can enjoy this. That's my dinner. I don't want to do anything else, you know? <laughs> oh, can you say that this could be possibly, I mean, is it, is it safe to say possibly an aged white burgundy at some point? How I, how, for me, always there was debate between burgundy and not. I don't think they have the, it has the punch of the, like, acertico. For me, acertico is burgundy age. This yeah. is more like Bordeaux. Bordeaux, it's more okay. like, yeah, like a semillon kind of element, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, uh, if it, it. Yeah, it's more, has that oily texture to it, you know, yes. has a little bit of, uh, not, not acetico does not, but acetico with a persian acidity, that's, that's a monster by itself, you know? But this is more like for me, white Bordeaux, semillon, sauvignon. Uh, when it's young, more like a Vouvray Chenin, you know, like that's Come kind on, what's of. The, uh, what's the, uh, how long, what's the oldest video I know you've tried? Borwas Vidiano 2012. It's like I told you, I don't have too much experience yeah. with this. 2012 Vidiano, yes. That's what oh, I have. I got an idea. And yeah. I have some 15 yet still, of Daphneos. I got an I idea. Da yeah, yeah. So we're going to do this every year. We're going to taste the new vintage, the old, yes. oldest vintage of Vidiano and see what's going on. Yes, definitely. You know what, what, you know what uh, Johnny needs to? Take six bars and put them aside, you know? Or okay. If he talks to, or if he talks to Dulufaikis, we can send him a couple of bottles of old vintages. 
you will see the difference. All right, you, know? cool. you definitely will see the I difference. I might have some know? lying around. <laughs> yes, yeah. And also Viviano, because it stayed, because in the beginning, he didn't understand the grape. And the first thing they want to do is oak. The first thing the Greeks, they had always this. I get the, I don't need, I need to protect it with oak. I need to protect it with oak. So uh, the first Vidianos were done with oak. And um, you enjoy them. They become more like chardonnay ish kind of. Mm -hmm. But the thing that now stainless steel is amazing. Or you see now, like, uh, like Dulufakis does uh, another wine. He does two things with, the, with, the, with Vidiano. This one is the first one, Daphneos. Then he experimented with Acacia. It's called, uh, I don't forget the name, the, the, the hand, the white hand. Uh, he, he does Acacia in it for like four, three to four months. Oh, the Aspros and Lagos. He, yeah, Aspros Lagos, yeah. And the other one, and one is uh, in Anfora. So three style of Vidiano. But I feel himself, he will not, you know, those other things. Like for me, uh, the, the one with the oak, with the acacia, I need less oak next time. And with the Anfora, Anfora is still experimental. And from yeah. vessel to vessel, you get different wines. I think the stainless steel for me is the ideal uh, platform for Vidiano to shine. Though if maybe you can do like acetico when you take maybe 20% is oak and 80% is stainless steel to, to, to lift it up a little bit yeah. from, from, from early age. That's why you add that oak in the beginning to lift it, but on its own, Stainless steel is the future for, for Vidiano, even though there is some amazing Cretan wine that's made with some oak. Uh, like Lira Rakis does a good job with it. Then well, there is so many wineries, like uh, beside uh, yeah. Ruth, Ruth also. Catherine, Ari, what do you guys think? Have you guys tasted it? Let's hear your tasting notes. I've been changing a bit because it was chilled when I first took it out of the fridge. So, and we, our last uh, sip clip was actually on how wines change as the temperature. Yeah. <laughs> so I've just been watching it get for sure. Beautiful. Yeah, it's it's, it's to Catherine's point. I've had this out for about three four minutes in the fridge. Yeah, and now it's like just loaded with flavor. Like mm. it just it just covers my palate with so much flavor. Mm. And it's such a soothing mouthfeel. Yeah, and for me, like Vidiano has that decisive Greek flavors. You know what I mean? Like almost like you're walking in the in the vineyard, you feel it. You know, like be, beside Assertico, meaning this beside Assertico that really in, embrace minerality. I think Vidiano is another wine that does very well with minerality. Showcase it very well. Delicious. Ari, I ran to get a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tasted it yet, so come back. You gotta have a bottle opener before a class. That's like number one rule. <laughs> I, okay, I am, I am a bottle opener. I'm a complete amateur with this. Yeah. <laughs> and and me, in meanwhile, also in in Crete, just to talk about district, you know, there is a lot of wine district in, in Greece. This uh, if you go from west to east, this is uh, Kisamos, and then there is then there is a Ritimno and Iraklion. Iraklion, that's what uh, Johnny was pointing with those dots, is most of the production comes from Iraklion. And then to the east is La City. La City, it's a small uh, region with two appellations, actually. Uh, wow. uh, both of them are pro uh, uh, protection designation of origin. One is called Sitia, which is you need to blend a Villana with Rapsapiri. For white and for the red, you can make a red dry or red sweet. If you make a red uh, dry, you, you take liatico mm -hmm. with mandilaria. And for sweet, you do liatico 100%. Also, there is pidio malvasia, which is a lot, of a lot of people talk about malvasia. And people think about malvasia as a grave variety. Malvasia is an ancient dessert wine that the Greeks were making for thousands of years. And even from, they were going to the ancient Roman Empire through the mid, mid, medieval era, uh, through the 17th century. So that Malvasia, uh, it's a blend of grape varieties that you send dry or fortified, which is made from Asetico, Vidiano, Trapsatiri, Liatico. And you need to put a minimum of 15% of Muscat, white or Muscat, or, or, uh, uh, or mal, 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 uh, Malvasia Aromatica. Mm. So those grapes goes into sun drying, and then you have a dessert wine. 
So that's Malvasia. It has nothing to do with, you know, you know, the, the, uh, the aromatica, Malvasia aromatica. It's yeah. Malvasia, which is a blend of grapes that you sand dry and you make a dessert wine. And that's, you know, dessert wine were traveled through centuries through Greece because that was mainly used in also in churches and stuff. So it was, it was very protected, in a, you know. In a health, in a health world during travel too, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and, uh, and then there is also in Iraqion 5 PDU Appellation, is Peza, which is you make a white or red. White is 100% Villana, a queen grape. And then red, you have Cozzifali with Mandilaria. Then there is Pidio Aharnes, which is uh, only red. It's Cozzifali and Mandilaria, which is, I love this appellation to protect indigenous grape. And then the Daphnis, which is uh, not for Vidiano, and hopefully they will wake up and make a PDO for Vidiano, but they will eventually, except in Greece, takes more time. Uh, and it's uh, red or sweet by Liatico, which is uh, Dulufikis make it. Uh, a fantastic um, liatico called also Daphnios and it's amazing, almost like a gamay style red. You know, you can chill it, it will be fantastic. So those are the appellations. So there is, there is some, some organization because you need right. that, you know, to protect the grape varieties and to protect, you know, um, because everywhere you go there is growing. You don't want just to cut other grape and plants. You want to be organized so to protect these grape varieties, not to overgrow them, not to over, you know, uh, for the production to be very, very limited. So they always be world-class wine, which is just bulk wine like they were doing pre-70s. This is delicious. I can't, I can't put my glass on. I've been sipping ever yes. since. It really is. Do you it's feel it as, any, uh, as, as you warm up in your, in your glass? Do you feel like a little bit of spiciness in it? Yes, yes, huh? absolutely, yes. As you, as, uh, as you warm, it becomes a little bit as a spiciness more prominent, to it. for sure. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I it even picked up yeah. a little bit when it was cold, but as it warms up, definitely it's, it's there. Yes. Definitely there. Okay, yeah. let's move to, we move to red, the red now? Yeah. So, um, okay, Johnny, go ahead with the red and then yeah, I'll, I'll follow I'll start up. start it off. So, so the next wine we have is from Alexakis Winery. Um, and one thing that's important to note real quick about the winery, the Alexakis family, they're one of the largest and most important wine ambassadors in Crete. Um, so they actually are one of the largest privately owned wineries. And they do a lot on the island to basically just increase the quality of Cretan grapes in general. So in addition to producing their own wines, the family does also buy grapes from all over the island. So they, they spend a lot of time educating the, the smaller growers and, and wine, uh, wine um, growers throughout the island so that they can basically, you know, increase the whole perception and quality of Crete. You know, they, I, I always forget that saying, when rising tides, all ships rise, whatever. That, that's, that's, oh, that's, when the tide commends, all ships rise or something. Yeah, like that, that. That, yeah. that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're definitely big believers of that. And they spend a lot of time, you know, educating their, their neighbors and even, you know, basically help grow Crete. And that, that is such an important thing. Mm. Um, so this wine here is a blend of Cozzifali and Syrah. Um, Cozzifali is a pretty awesome red variety from the island and it's often blended with other grapes. And Syrah, I think, is a perfect match. Um, one thing I love about Syrah, especially from like the Rhone Valley in France, it has such a really awesome spice characteristic. Uh, and the Cote Folly does really well. It kind of adds to that. Um, yeah. I was going to ask. I, I was always curious. What is the, what is the relationship between Syrah and Cote What What determines this French variety to actually um, be so like match? made with uh okay. with Cote like what do you even have an idea yeah, like, i think that like Syrah, so awesome. yeah i mean Syrah. i think Cote Syrah has body it has a lot of you know body and depth to it and the Cote Folly has a lot of that flavor and aromatics and together you know when you marry the body of the Syrah with those aromatics and and depth of flavor that the Cote Folly, it goes with it. Yeah. um someone sent me this this tasting description and i think it was perfect that this is an old world wine that's bordering new world style. So you get, you have those, those rich oak qualities, 
you have that like really nice chocolatey kind of depth from the oak characteristics, some sweetness from the fruitiness. But then you have those like really savory earthy qualities mm. that are really, really cool. Um, and this particular wine is, you know, it's one of the higher rated wines that we bring in and what, that we import. We've got 92 points in wine enthusiasts and, um, you know, for, for, the, for the price you're paying, I think you're getting a tremendous amount of value. And this is from 2000, you're drinking the 2015, I believe, right? Yes. Um, yes, we are. Yeah. So think of that. That's a five-year-old wine that you're, you're, it has so much complexity, depth of flavor. Mm. Uh, and, you know, you're, you're not spending as much money on it. Whereas another wine from 2015 today, you might have to pay a lot, of, a lot more for for that amount of age. So um, mm. that's my I, think, I really did yeah. notice the, the aroma. The aroma really, really hit me uh, when I first started tasting this. It's yeah. extremely it, distinct, yeah. Yeah, it has a very distinct aroma. It's very interesting. And the aroma. I was gonna. Yeah, go ahead. Go, uh, Catherine. So this wine is so distinct to me. When I taste it, I get a lot of herbal qualities. Yes. Yes. I know you said yeah. a lot of earth flavors, but this yes. is. I feel like I could try a bunch of red wines next to each other, and this one mm. would stick out to me. How how's the tannins? Uh, How the tannins? So soft. Okay. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely for me, it's a value wine again. It's everyday wine. Uh, this is, you can open it, put it in the fridge, chill it. You can have it with a pizza. You can have it with cheese. You can have it with your burger. Uh, uh, and Alex Sakis don't, doesn't mind if you taste it with, eat with a pizza, you know, because <laughs> he, his idea is to make a, a, a wine that it is, in a way, look and taste modern. That's, that's, his, that's his philosophy. Smart packaging, always, which is he does. You can see it on the label. He, he, he works with details, you know what I mean? Mm. And he wants always, again, the same uh, word or same quote I told, deliver much more quality than the price. That is always objective, you know? Uh, the wine is a blend of two things. You have, okay, you have Cotifari indigenous grape variety, Syrah indig uh, international grape. And going back to Syrah, why it's blend very well? Well, it's the best combination. Believe me, they tried everything. I follow them then. They, they blend with Cabernet Merlot. Then they turn other grapes. And eventually Syrah for me is the best uh, international for Greek blending. It works very well with indigenous grape variety because sometimes some grape variety lack aromatic. So it's the Syrah had aromatic and body to the wine. Cotifali is very... That, come on, just sorry to cut you off. I just think, I also think that maybe it could be because um, the, the terroir of Crete is very similar to the Rhone Valley in, in France. You have those like high winds, you have those really, those really uh, dry soil, those high altitudes. Maybe that could be a factor? Yeah, maybe. You know, for me, like, why I say that? Because the Syrah in Macedonia blend very well with this. So for, and they tried Cabernet Merlot and pulled Cabernet Merlot and plus Syrah. I think Syrah, with some reason, did very well in, in, in Greece. Maybe it comes from Greece. Let's tell, let's tell us the French. No, right? you know, <laughs> let, let's put this. Well, I, uh, I, remember, I remember hearing that this uh, Syrah, actually, or they call it the Shiraz, was from the Middle East uh, or from, oh, from yeah. Syria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. And then it moved its yeah. way to to the Levant then to Greece so maybe yeah it's closer to our natives it's not actually yes. native to France it's native it does to it does very well it does very well overall in Greece so the Cotsifari is very soft and mellow you know how that plummy flavor and, and also it's fresh because of the acidity you add the Merlot you add the Syrah give it a little bit of body a little boost also the, all those aromatic you feel but see here Alexakis has let's go back he has the Syrah and the Cotsifali so Cotsifali and Syrah. So internus. Then again, the oak selection. He used American oak, mm. which is uh, old American oak and new French oak. So you have this balance between flavor, you know, to and to come up with almost a balanced white structure wine. With the emphasis here is fruit. You know, you have this wild forest berries. You find this, and this, and you get that. that this is from the fruit itself. You have this uh, like green and pink peppercorn that come from the fruit, and then you have this. Uh, um, minerality again that comes comes with the terroir and the flavors that add from you have them from American oak you have the dark chocolate you have that fine grain that gives a texture tannins you have aromas of cedar I believe um, you know and earthy element and savory element that comes with old 
old French barrel. So you have this blend of flavor. So you have a blend of great variety. You have two, uh, two different terroirs. Cotifali come from, um, I believe, uh, different terroir than the Syrah, different elevation, different maturation, because everything's separate. They make the Syrah, has a mono grape variety, age it, and when they're ready, and they make the Cotifali, and then they come up to the, uh, the blend, which is 60% Cotifali, 40. That's overall the idea. Some year may vary, you know, by some degrees, but that's not important. The, bar the bottom line is, in the end, you have this lush, elegant uh, wine with nice texture, nice, you know, tannic texture, has an uh, elegant flavor, you know, especially with the finish. The finish, I feel like almost new world. Uh, as, as it goes, yeah, elegant. As, as you go deeper and you wait for your nisip, then you have this, like Catherine said, those herby notes, you know, mm. like eucalyptus, a little bit of minty mm. character. Yes, the dry mint, you have that character coming in. And, uh, and, and, and the price, I'm sure, because I buy it, I, we use it by the glass, uh, you know, once a while in rotation. It's, it's very, um, you, you'll be, you know, you do very well with, with, you know, as a consumer or as a, as a Well, as if a I can restaurant. take them out, this, uh, uh, at least in our market, this is a wine that would retail under $20. Yes, it delivers a lot more than twenty dollars. Exactly, that's why that's a deliver more quality than the price. That's for sure, you know. Fantastic. And that's the that's the idea of uh, Alexaki, especially because, like Johnny says, he's the biggest uh, producer in the island. I, I, you know what, almost Greece, not owner of land, but uh, producer of wine. Mm -hmm. I think is almost. Uh, I'm not believe the last numbers may be. I cannot tell you the numbers because the numbers change post uh, 2000, I would say 2011 because the number changed. But you produce like almost his number one, number one production of wine in Greece, but different labels uh, for different market, different packages. So uh, that's why also um, he works with a lot of wine growers and that's keep the island. Because Cretan are for Cretan. Eh? They, they're almost like they, they may butt hand, in closed door, but outdoor they are, you know, with, you know, they, they support each other and they help each other because if one Sounds winery like does, does very well, everybody does very well. So absolutely. Well, yeah, so that's why you see I, that. Yeah. I have to say these are both rock star productions. Yeah. Um, so true to their, you know, their locality, their, their local variety, the integrity of these wines are far beyond uh, what I think would imagine when they think of Greek wine. I, yeah. I, I commend them for what they do, and I definitely want to use this platform for our, our audience and those that will see this webinar moving forward that, uh, you know, consider Greek wines on the level of any other international production that's out there that they enjoy. Yeah, definitely. Don't be biased. Go ahead. Buy It's what, $20? You can make a decision for your own. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, there's a lot of wineries that can offer, you know, from like Alexakis to Dulufakis to Lerarakis to Karibitakis, Manusakis, Butari, Rus, well, all this winery can give you a bala under $20 and you can make your own decisions, you know what I mean? And you're going to go back to it because I know the decision you're going to have. Uh, you know, the whites are very crisp, fresh, elegant, easy to drink, approachable, uh, have sense of place. The red are balanced, are, 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 even for a red is crisp, you know what I mean? They're not heavy. They're not tired. You can, you know, you can, you can match them with food. You know, what do you want from a bottle of wine for $20, you know? Right, right. And having said that, Kamal and uh, Johnny, let's, uh, I mean, this is fantastic. Um, I, I, I love the in-depth analysis from Kamal. I think the play-by-play -play that you provided is far beyond any education that we've offered here in, any, in any of our segments. Uh, can we open up this segment to some questions to our audience and sure. uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. kind of like pick our, your brain and Johnny's brain and, and uh, see what we can uh, provide them with answers. Yes, to their questions? of course. Yes. Ari, can you open up the, uh, the, 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 the virtual lines for questions? All right. I have, I actually have a couple already. Um, how, uh, how would you consider cream wine different from other Greek wines? like Santorini wines, for example. Okay, yeah. Well, first of all, Santorini is unique on his own. 
The focus in Santorini is only three gray variety, Acircico, Aidani, and Athiri on the white, and the red is Mavro Tragano and Mandilaria. Santorini, um, because of the unique terroir and the, the, the shape of the grape and the age of the grapes, because Santorini never saw phylloxera, so their vineyard average is about 70 years old. You can get some wine with, from 120 to 160 years of wine. Um, the, the strength of the Acertico are bigger than any grape variety, even though there is some Acertico on Isle of Crete, but it's different, of course. So those are more mineral driven, more powerful, more masculine. Um, if you go to Crete, again, is a, you know, it's beautiful terroir. We talked about that already, but there are more finesse grapes, you know, like, like Villana, like Vidiano. And also you will pay half the price when it comes to Santorini because Santorini right now is like talking Burgundy. Yeah. The production is so, 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 uh, so small that, uh, I mean, entry-level bottle of Acertico, which is amazing, world-class, you would pay 50 bucks for it compared to 20 bucks from Crete. Right, Johnny? Price-wise? Yeah, exactly. And I think shop. another thing to add to that is that you know, every region in Greece has its unique qualities and properties. I think what's special about Crete right now is there's hidden gems that haven't necessarily been discovered yet. Um, and, and you know, there, there's, there's less Cretan wines in America for, than wines from Santorini or wines from Northern Greece. Those are the regions that have a little bit more. And after, after the seminar, I think we'll, we'll have, we'll have more uh, Cretan wine drinkers than, than yeah. before. That's for sure. You just gained one. <laughs> <laughs> What's ne Okay, go ahead. Let's keep All going. right. Um, so uh, Crete is the, mo the southernmost Greek island. Is the island's location important to the taste of its productions? Yeah, I, yes, think, for I think one big yeah, factor there is it's by being southern, but more south, it's, it's warmer. But also, it's pro the way it's is close to Africa, it creates a lot of wind. This, so there's a wind that kind of comes off the coast of like the, the, the Libyan Sea going through. That, like, that, that, that terroir is definitely a factor in, in, its, in, its, uh, in the quality of the wines. And Crete, uh, as we talked about before, it's all these uh, valleys and plateaus. The island is anchored by three big uh, mountains, like 8,000, little over 8,000 then about 7,000, another 7,000. So these are barriers. Actually, these help the northern part of the island because it's less cooler than the southern part. The southern part is about two degrees warmer. So you see the production almost the other side of the mountain. So you have this elevation. Uh, if you go in July, you may see white snow caps still on. So there's a lot of water. There's no underwater. It's a lush. So the environment that's that been created uh, for the island, uh, for, for, from but the natural elements of the island, help um, help uh, produce uh, specific wines. And again, these wines are only produced in beside Vidiano because I told you everybody want to have some hand on it because Vidiano it's planted some some other place in in, in non in non Crete, but all the other ones are only in Crete, so they're protected, so they're very unique. They have a unique grape variety growing in, in, in a combination of climate, topography, waterability, and soil. That's what makes it very unique, you know? And, uh, and the location, it is very unique because you have the, when, when it's winter, you have the, uh, the wind from Libya that, that temper the region. When it's summer, it's the other way around. The Meltami come from the north, from the Aegean, and cool off. So you have always a temper, uh, uh, temperature so the 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 condition to grow grape is ideal you know sometimes yes there is that humidity humidity everywhere but by picking the slope and picking the sun orientation and the wind pattern that means no one understanding your vineyard you can have better fruits and by having better fruits you're gonna have better wine excellent oh. um okay uh, how many bottles are produced in Crete? If you guys have like a ballpark figure, like, yeah, you know? the Crete, Crete. I tell you, vineyard, vineyard. Uh, Crete is fifteen percent of the total vineyard of of uh, of Greece. So it's a lot, you know. It's fifteen percent oh, wow. of the whole the whole I vineyard. Cap 
No, one, one five, mm -hmm. one five, fifteen. Okay, I, I thought you said fifty percent. I was like, oh no, my no, god, no, fifty. I will move back there. That's, uh, 50. that's so, that's so yeah, significant. Fifty percent, and I think there is uh, because there is about thirty wineries. 30 wineries with maybe 25 of them produce less 60,000 bottles. So those are, we call it uh, handcrafted wineries or boutique wineries. Some of them produce 25,000, like Economo, which is a, a brilliant madman, but he creates some fantastic <laughs> wine. Um, and compared to, say, uh, Alexakis maybe, maybe makes, I think, 1.2 million bottles. So yeah, it's... Uh, Maybe then, but maybe things change. Maybe 600 now, 50% of the capacity. But still, it's, I will say, 15% of, of Greece vineyard. That's, uh, that, that's, an, that's approximately, yes. All right. I have, a, I, have a, I have a somewhat interesting question here. Does Cretan white wine match more of a mezze type of food? Like, does it complement, like, fried foods, uh, maybe the acidity in the fried foods? Yes. Does that um, well, see, the good thing about, you know, uh, that's why when you go to Greece and you order, you have a bunch of things. You have, you have fried sardines or anchovies. You have cheese. You have salad. You have zucchini fritters. You have a piece of salad cheese. And what you have, you have one wine. That means what that tells you. That tells you that the acidity of the wine can stand to different wines, can stand to fried food, can stand to a oh. salad. Can, it's almost very versatile, very versatile. And acidity is very important. And also the absence of oak, for me always I believe that, it gives that freshness. And almost you take a piece of cheese like Saganaki, you sip your Vidiano, you cleanse your palate. You pick up a piece of fish, you drink that, and you pick up the Vidiano, for example, you cleanse your palate. So they are very uh, versatile and can work very, with very... That's why when you go to Greece, you're going to experience that because you see the table full of food, different kind of food. So they are, yes, versatile, white wine or red wine, you know. So, but I, feel, I, I prefer white wine more with overall Greek cuisine than red. And if you like to love red, you're going to love red. doesn't matter what cuisine it is. Right. Awesome. Um, is there a co-op or do all wineries in Crete grow their own grapes? What happened? Co-op? Yeah, always there is. This is by law. Every uh, commune, we talked about five of them. Uh, all of them, uh, Kisamos, there's Cooperative of Kisamos, Cooperative of Hania, Cooperative of Ritimno, Cooperative of Heracliona in Lesseta, because no one grape will go to waste because oh. they want to protect the village. They want to, to push you. They want your generation, your son and your grandson, keep the tradition. If you make one, uh, grapes and nobody buy them from you, why are you going to be doing that? You're going to go to the city, right? So by protecting those growers, Interesting. Cooperative is a, it is obligated or by law to buy your grapes. You knock at the door, you open, you measure, you get paid. That's that's what it is. So and that's why you, Alexakis, for example, work with small. Instead of going to the cooperative, he will buy directly from them, but he give them direction. I want my grapes at this yield. I want this at this one. I want the canopy management at this one. I want you to do pruning this time of the year. So that's uh, more collaboration with the winemaker and the vine growers, because there's a lot. There's only grapes or vines or olive trees. That's it, that's what it's fine, you know what I mean? So that's what they focus on in Crete. Besides, uh, you know, they don't need to buy, they don't buy nothing from nowhere. They, everything is produced within the island. Interesting. Do you consider, would you consider Cretan wines biodynamic? Well, biodynamic, it's a, a style, and there is few of them that do biodynamic, like it's a winery called Silva, uh, does do uh, biodynamic. It's in Heraklion again. Uh, it's, a, it's a choice if you want to do biodynamic. Well, like Johnny said, Greek did or, uh, organic wine for many, many, many years, not because they feel that's the right way to do it. Before anybody starts talking about it, they were doing it. So biodynamic is again another choice. I knew a few wineries that, that do that, um, but it's not the focus right now. I mean, there's still a choice. They still make good wines, uh, but there's not too many of them that practice uh, biodynamic. But there is, you know, there is. Interesting. Okay. Um, does domestic consumption in Crete affect exports? Well, the most of the uh, wineries consume domestically. I think. 
I think 80 or 90% of the wine is drunk within Greece. Um, so it doesn't necessarily affect exports. I think that they still make a good amount of wine. We could always take more. Um, we just need to drink more wine. The real question is, us Americans just drink more Greek wine, then it will affect the Greek. <laughs> was, that, was that question answered just in case, do we ever run out of Crete wine? <laughs> well, the, the, idea is, the, the idea is the Greek love their wine. They go out a lot. It's going out to eat is not a life. It's not a necessity. It's life. It's the way of life. You know what I mean? And they go is- on. They meet, yeah, they meet their people. They meet their friends. They, you know. They want to talk, you know, there's less talking on the phone. It's more talking face to face, you know, let's grab a coffee. Let's grab a glass of wine. Let's go dinner. So that's part of life. It's always out summer. They never spend long in the house, always out. If they're in veranda, if they have a space. Yes. If they're not, they're going to be in restaurants and by the pool and by the beaches. So they, they have, so there's consumption. Yes. But after, after two, these fact numbers, after 2007, the, the consumption of wine went down because economically people couldn't afford anymore. But now with the, that's why we have good wines because then they say in 2007 they say okay we need to focus on international we cannot just make any wine and 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 we're gonna sell it we need to make world-class wine that can compete with french with italian with other parts of the world and give value and good wine and and good labeling and smart packaging and 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 do that so i think the export grew because i told you when i took over in 2002, I had maybe uh, 30 wines that I can get. Right now, if I want to have a wine list of 2,000 labels, I can do it if I want. Wow. You know what I mean? So, uh, so there is a lot of labels. Yes, there is a lot of labels, but there is some good and there is also some bad. No, no well, doubt. You know what so I mean? Basically, so, Kamal, what you're saying is that we can come to your restaurant 2,000 times and have a different wine. <laughs> yes, it, yeah, for sure you could. Yes. It's <laughs> a great way to look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so that, that's, I think I could give you another fact about Greek wine. Whenever Foti visits an area, the wine consumption goes up about 75%. <laughs> That's great. So <laughs> uh, you, you, should vi- you can visit us in Molivos. We have, you know, That's a deep good. cellar. You well, can, you know. I think my wine consumption goes up 75% when I hang out with Ari and Foti, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lee, I have a few more questions. Um, I'm just going to throw this in because, uh, I got a comment from Greece, from somebody who does Greek uh, wine tours, and she said Kamal knows his stuff better than most Greeks I've ever met. So I just wanted to let you know. (laughs) Uh, So one more, uh, a couple more questions. If one were to try Cretan Red, would you suggest a blended wine with an international grape or go straight to the single variety? Try them all. Or, so many. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you know, there's also some great, you know, there's, I would try the Dulufakis Liatico next. Uh, that's a really great red variety. Um, so I think you can't go wrong with either. Yeah, me too. I, there are some amazing blends uh, uh, with international grapes, but I would go indigenous. I would focus on indigenous to, to, to try something completely different. You will not feel like you're tasting Sirah and the Sirah will take your mind off it, whatever. But Liatico is very good. It does very well. Different from different uh, appellation, especially the one from uh, Daphnes. Uh, it's hundred percent. It's it's cool. It's like Gamay style. You can have it with anything you want. Um, and the other one I like also from the same um, from Peza, which is a blend of Cotsifali and Mandilaria. Also very good. So like like you can do either way. You're still gonna enjoy them both. But I would say. Always look for a wine. At least there is some indigenous grape variety. So, for example, Alexakis, you have some uh, some uh, Cotsifale with Syrah. You can try the Liatico by uh, Dulufakis. Uh, another gentleman makes a good uh, uh, reds. It's Rus. It's a blend of uh, Cotsifale and Mandilaria called uh, the Skipper. Uh, Butari makes uh, wine. Uh, from Crete as well. Uh, it's very Lilla, good. Lilla. Lilla Rakis makes a fantastic, does a good job in the island, in, uh, makes a Liatico. Uh, Karavitaikis makes a young winemaker. The, the Nico Karavitaikis makes a good quality sort of blend. 
can have a straight Cotsifali, you can have a Cotsifali with touch of Merlot. Uh, you can see some Mavrotragano now planted in the, on the island, which is doing very well. So there is, a lot of, there is a lot of red from Crete that you still not pay too much money, uh, like I say, and then you can enjoy some wine from them. And also right. Economo, if you want something like a little more money, but you're gonna, if you think you're in Piedmonte, Economo makes amazing what, what, age. What makes, what makes him crazy? Not crazy. He's uh, the <laughs> philosopher. The philosophy. I mean, he's adventure. That's what I'm saying. He right. does things a little more different. He's, I admire. He does a release. He does a release his wine after the minimum after four years. So, uh, for example, we have on the list a Pesa, which is Mandelarium. It's from 1994 or 1994. Liatico from 2000. Amazing. So he, he takes his time. He has, uh, he has this uh, philosophy. I forget the name of a uh, Spanish winemaker who does these things, um, which is he makes his wine and ages them in this big, huge barrel, old, and just wait for them and he, until they talk to him, you know? Okay. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I like yeah, that. that. Yes, yes. Awesome. Even his, wine, even his white wine are aged four years, you know what I mean? So it's good. Excellent. Are there any notable rosés from Crete? Ah. Yes, of course. I mean, if you able to, you know, most of the rosé will come from a red, Method Seignant, so it's byproducts, it's economically good and taste. It's, it's hot in Crete, so you need a rosé. Rosé has became the last five years uh, almost a, a fashion, I would say. Um, I love rosé because also there's versatile uh, uh, grapes. Uh, versus like wines and Cotsifali can make a kick ass. I'm sorry if I can use this language, but you can say uh, whatever you my want. goodness, <laughs> you can say you want. <laughs> uh, a rose is fantastic. Um, and then there is a Mandilaria, and then there is some indigenous grape like Guranache Rouge, which is style of uh, you do some, but there's some beautiful roses like a Provence style, small pigmentation, not too many, maybe depend on the grape variety between eight and ten hours uh, skin contact yep. stainless steel fermentation uh and then uh, 14 15 dollars later you have a beautiful bottle of wine awesome, awesome. Uh, i have another question here i i'm reading it and i don't even understand it so uh hopefully you guys do English? What about who's the greek <laughs> what about plito variety what are the characteristics plito 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 grape variety this yeah, is okay. another variety. There is two variety that were discovered by Lira Rakis. Before you you will buy a bottle of wine, you will say Van de Crete, mean wine of Crete. So basically, they pick whatever grapes they come in, press them, and give you a wine that you don't know what it's in it. So they, they decided to go to this vineyard wild and pick them, study them, plant them. That's a lot of effort and money, and do mono variety, meaning one grape in one bottle. So one of them is Daphne and Plito. Plito is almost like it was like, like almost done, you know, it's gone. Um, and it's has, I love about it, has a refreshing acidity and lemony lightness to it. It's so, it's almost like has lemon grass, lemon lime, grapefruit, kumquat, fresh, easy going uh, uh, grape, you know what I mean? So there's not, only a couple of them are blending them. When you see blending, Think about in Crete that they have only young vineyards, so they not have a potential to have it 100%. Even though they may tell you something else, but that's truth. Um, and when they reach, they feel like the vineyards are good enough to handle the wine, then they will have it 100%. I think the Arakis and other wine may, uh, have it as 100%, which is again, is another indigenous that was saved in the last, I would say, 15 years. Same thing with Viviano, same thing with uh, uh, Daphne, which is mean basically laurel, is like bay leaf characteristic. Yes. The only one that was planted like crazy is in 1980s, Villana, because after 77, that was the last phylloxera, and then the government tell them to plant, and everybody planted Villana, neglecting all these other ones, but with time, I think I feel like this grape came in the right timing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was meant to be. Cool. Awesome. Um, I have I have one more question. Um, one more question. How common are these wines throughout the U.S., not just New York? Oh, yeah. That was mine. Yeah. <laughs> so 
Uh, Johnny, go ahead and tell about your wine, where you can find them. I'm yeah, sure you so can find them all we, over the United States. With Diamond Imports, we, we distribute to 42 states or 43 states. So our wines are actually all over the U.S. Um, I think Massachusetts and New York and New Jersey are in, in Illinois and Chicago are like the biggest uh, states for, for some of these wines from Crete. But we distribute it all the way from Maine down to Florida, all the way to California, Oregon. We're in Hawaii uh texas so we're all over and i think especially because cretan wines have so much value to it mm. a lot of people who you know it might be some people's first greek wine and never had any greek wines before in a market that doesn't have a big greek presence cretan wines might be the first one because they have so much value that people might be like gravitate towards those so yeah they're actually starting to get a lot more um uh, visibility and uh, distribution throughout the country that's great. Yeah, and, uh, yeah and, 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 and the easy parts of it, I'm sure everybody has a, a trusted wine shop. Go to him. Hi, buddy. Just I'm looking for some Greek wines. I'm right. sure if you order a case, he will buy it for you. I don't think he will miss making you know, 20, 25, 30% whatever he makes. Hmm. He knows that you're going to pick it up. He's not going to stress with it. And maybe by you telling this wine, this wine shop, hey, give me some Greek wine, he will open up his eyes and say, you know, what I'm missing, you know? Right, that's the goal. That's how it all spreads. If I can yes. add to that, if I can add to that, yeah. for our listening audience and the guests, or for those that view this uh, webinar after the fact, if you can't find uh, any of the selections at your local retail shop, you can definitely order uh, some of the selections, especially Alexakis and Dulufakis, on our platform. So we have oh, a yeah. shopping cart that oh, yeah. we ship all over the country. So Easy. If you get it at your local wine shop, we'll get it to you through FedEx for sure. Awesome. Yeah, so that's the easy part. You, you already have a platform for them, able to go in, click a couple yeah. of clicks, and the wine will be delivered in no time, you know? So Definitely yeah. both the Alexakis, Kotifali, Syrah, and the, and the uh, Dulofakis uh, video I know is available on our platform. And at the same token, uh, I wanted to thank Kamal uh, for definitely spending the time with us. This was more than informative. This was a treat personal. Say, uh, I, I, sorry to cut you off, Futhi. I want to say, as a as a true Cretan, Kamal. I mean, you. He's more Cretan than you. <laughs> you need a little more. I don't. You know, as a Cretan, I wasn't just satisfied with with you know everything you were saying. Like, I need some more information. Is there, is there any more information? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can do. Let's do another one tomorrow. Yeah. No That's exactly what I was going to say. This is. You know, Kamal, this will not be the, the last time. We definitely want you to be back with us. Sure. This, this was an honor. I'm happy to. Treat. Great. Well, honor is I ours to be on the show us. and able to talk about Greek wines because that's Absolutely. the most important thing. It's not, definitely. you know. And then, we are, for me, like always I say, I'm a just storyteller. I go in, shake these guys' hands, see it. how blistered hands and what they do and the effort and the energy they put in Greece. And I want to show a case to the, let's, to the world. That's also... Especially, um, Let's also plug uh, the fact that, you know, for those that are in, have been intrigued and those that may, you know, when the time is right for them, they want to visit New York. Let's plug the restaurants and, you know, how can they get in touch with the restaurants? And you, you yes. know, going some so, websites, contact. Yeah, easy. So basically, God will, when everything goes back to normal, you come to New York, you have two destinations for us. You can come to Molivos Restaurant. It's on the, in the west side, uh, between, on uh, 7th Avenue, between 55th and 56th. You can check us on check one by one list at uh, www.molivos.com. Yes. Our younger sister, uh, Osia, which is a modern, uh, uh, modern Greek cuisine. A little fun, hip kind of. Also, we have a, not as deep wine list, but more, you know, a vibrant wine list, you know, that can match the cuisine by the chef here. It's Osea. It's 629 West uh, 57th Street. You almost uh, come all the way to the, to the river. And at uh, www.osea, O-U-S-I-A, New York, NYC.com. And that's where you come in and, and also have some beautiful uh, Greek wines as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kamal. And uh, if I can also, before we end it off, uh, for our listening and viewers, we do have another fun and interesting segment coming up soon with Johnny again. You know, Johnny's never going to leave this. Uh, <laughs> ever. Uh, so on John, August, my favorite what, host of all time. Well, August, I'll be, I'll be like, I'll be like the uh, what's his name, the 
Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, exactly. The, the Greek Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> no, no, no. Like you're gonna, you are the Greek Ryan Reynolds because he has <laughs> the Greek, uh, the, one of Greece's first gins, right? Straight yeah. dog. So, so here's yeah. the, I'm going to let Johnny tell us a little bit about this, but please, for those of you that are listening, uh, marketing your calendars, Google, Google, uh, put that in your Google calendar. But uh, August 27th, Johnny's coming back. And uh, Johnny, tell us what we're going to talk about on yeah, that. Yeah, so um, we, we're just, we Straight Out Wild Gin just launched in the US. And we, we're going to be in Massachusetts starting tomorrow. Hey. But he's the first one to place an order for Massachusetts. So that's exciting. Uh, and then we'll give everyone, all your, all the okay. users, an opportunity to purchase some. Uh, and we'll do a cocktail class. So I'll teach you a little bit about the story of the gin. Uh, how we came up with the idea, how we made it, how it goes into it, and then we'll um, we'll make a bunch of drinks together. I'll, I'll teach you a little bit about cocktailing, gin, gin cocktails, gin, and awesome. make a stirred and a shaken drink. And I just want to say, uh, which is something uh, dear to my heart, uh, that part of uh, Johnny's profits for Stray Dog Gin goes to uh, Dog. Yes, yeah, Stray Dog Shelters in Greece. Wow, that's amazing. God oh, bless you, man. That's off. That's off to you. <laughs> well, that wraps up another segment of Vines Unknown. We want to thank all of our special guests, Kamal, Johnny, for putting this together with us. My co-host, Ari, Catherine, thank you so much for putting this together. Thank this you, time. guys. And uh, I just want everyone to, you know, be safe. Um, drink lots of Cretan wine until the next <laughs> segment. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Yes. All right. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Yes. Bye.